guys and welcome back this is my charging unit now I've got it set up to a old PS, uh, PSU power supply off a computer and I put a switch in between the green and the black wire now these are charging but if I try to put another, another battery in I'll just drop one down through there it'll just shut down now if I left the thing on for a fair bit of time it'll shut down if i put a clamp meter across across there it's not on at the moment but if it was and it is now it's reading point point one or nothing really um around about point one so it's turned itself off so I've deduced that this power supply, either the power supply or the wire is too small for the job. Now I have doubled this wire up. This wire each is 10 amps. So two of these should be 20 amps and that should be enough for this. Uh, the wiring here is very heavy duty. It's not gonna affect anything in the, in the game, game. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I have a couple of these uh, ESP-127 compact power supplies, server power supplies. Now, I'm going to do a bit of shorting on a couple of pins because I found somewhere on the net how to short it out to get the voltages. And apparently the 5 volts is on the back and it should be 25 amps. And I'm thinking that this will be a good setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that when I do set it up, I'm going to use some XT60s to connect to. So it's nice and neat and compact and I can remove it when I want to and get it all out of the way. So let's get on with that. Okay, guys, first thing you need to do is you need to tin the gold plate. So you, these two are going to be shorted, so you need to tin that gold plate nice and neat, like that. Nice bit over here. Um, straight away, I'm just going to throw this in in a second. Actually, I'll just do the other one. So, yeah. As you see here, this is the uh, ESP127, or uh, the power supply number is PS, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? PS5501-1, this is revision four, and I'm not gonna put that on there. I just need to put some copper buzz bar across it. If I can straighten that out, that'd be all awesome. We'll just a little bit so I will just solder that onto there and then cut the rest of it off you're better off to have a longer piece and a shorter piece because let's let's be serious there's not much room there to stuff around with it so once I get that into position using um, not using the right tool for the right job isn't a really good idea but anyway there you go that's in position there and that's just going to be soldered on here like that so there's one now apparently the green light might take a little while to go on it's what's on a lot of forums across the internet now, I'm not saying that all forums are correct, but this is like I'm taking the risk of building this thing. And hopefully, if I blow it up, you guys won't. It's a good recommendation, isn't it? So, I'm going to use that. I might use this. So, okay. So our next one is going to go onto there, but I keep losing them. Right. 
Tinning done here. And this little bit of wire. It's not very big wire, but if I don't tin it, I'm gonna have a lot of problems. You don't have to do what I'm doing, I'm just cheap and nasty at doing things like this. Finish it off by bloody soldering the other end. It should be just neatly done. Not a very clean job, but it'll do the job. Now, these two pins here that's your positive, that's your negative, your 12 volt line. What I need is five volts, which I'm thinking five volts might be these two lines here. If you put it on an angle, you can see all the little rivets, or little marks that's connected together. Uh, we need to connect these two together, so I need to tin them. Then I'll need to test it and get a multimeter and check the voltages before I go on to do the final bit. Look, did have another piece down there. Always a way, isn't it? When things go missing, they go missing. I might have another bit hanging around here somewhere. Oh yeah, this bit. Doesn't have to be a big short, it just has to short it across. And this is where we're soldering together. And down here is your positive negative with your 5 volt line, hopefully. The underneath part of the uh, ESP127 or the PS5501 from Compact. Okay, guys, we've got success. You've got the fan on, I feel the fan going through, and you've got the green light hanging off there. So, there's that. And there's the two links on the top to get it running. So you need three, three links with it. Now, hopefully, I can get you in there, bring it across. And put it there. I'm just trying to get a good spot for you guys to be able to see what I'm actually doing. So, we've got multimeter across the 12 volt line. There's your 12.6 volts across there. Um, I don't think that's a negative line, so I'm just checking the others. Nothing there. There's a 3 volt line over, over towards the left hand side there, and that's your earth. Now I'll flip it over. Just remember it's got 25 amps coming off this baby. So there's your negative line there. There's 12 volts again there. But nothing there. There's your 5 volt line there. I don't know whether that's the ancillary or the, or the other voltage. I will at, mark that down in a second. So that's 5 volt line. Well, I've got the texture here. Grab it. Yeah, so I've got texture. I'm just going to mark it. So you've got your negative line there. And that's your 5 volt line there. So this is 5 volts. Positive to the negative. So I'll just run across there. Oh, I won't even bother. I'll just check if there's any other voltages here. There's that 3.5 three, three, three volt line. 
there. I don't think any of these have got anything on them, but I'll give them a check. There's an 11 volt, almost 12 volt line there. It's hard to mark them. There's negative 12 volts. It's still 5 volts. So that's a negative 12 volt line. I'm wondering whether... I'm not even going to bother trying to go across to these two because it's just going to give me the bad, bad heebie-jeebies. Check the other side again for anything that I might have missed. So, let's go from here to here. There's your three volt line. Not sure what that would have been, but anyway. That's got nothing there. Nothing there. There's a five volt line there. It'd be like an auxiliary five volts right about here. And I'm not sure what the center line of that's meant to be. Well, that's five volts too. That's five volts. So the center line is five volts. So I could probably rip off that. I don't know, that would be an ancillary. So I'm thinking that that's the four amp line. So I should be able to connect that to one single row. The rest I'll set up as I'll probably end up setting this big one at the back here up as my 5 volt line. I'm hoping that that's the highest I'm going to get. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is unplug it and put a terminal on there. Terminal block. A little terminal block to see if I can get that running. It's a pity it's so far apart. The pause and neg. So, let's have a look. I've started using these ones as my main one to go to the negatives, uh, the, the power side, and I'm using these ones for the other side. And I use this end, I'm not sure if I'm correct or not, but I use this end as my negative and the bigger block for my positive. So, anyway. I'll solder these on and I'll give you a quick show and that should be it. Hey guys, um, I've hooked up heavier wire than I thought. I've removed the other power supply and I've put the server power supply in. Now I've got to use some caption, captain tape to caption tape to cover the, the power supply to stop it from getting shorted out. But I think I've fixed my problem. And now it works properly. So, I had this really bad problem. I talked to uh, Brett in New Zealand. I don't know whether any of you guys know Brett, but um, I had a lot of problems with trying to charge things. I had two of these power supplies, one after the other, that were absolutely stuffed. I did pick them up second hand. I'll pick this up second hand. But you've got to be a bit careful because you might read the right voltages off it, but the actual device isn't putting out that type of power and yeah although it's a very hot day today I have decided to run these um, I suppose it's cooler than normal I'll explain what cooler than normal is cooler than normal is 39 degrees which is double at 30 as a guesstimate that's maths not it's probably more on the internet and you guys can correct me but that would be like um, hundred and ten hundred and ten Fahrenheit so at the end of the day it's pretty hot to run this I don't know whether I'm going to run it for long I think some of these batteries are not charged up high enough to even get voltage that I want out of them like these three here 
they're blinking, you know they're not up to charge. So that's my next project. I need to make a battery power supply. I have got a power supply from China, and yes, it works, but I would rather make my own because I've made things in the past. I've got a battery charger for a car hanging around here that I actually made the, or actually made the transformer at school, and it is still going, and I'm 52 now, and that thing has been going since I was 16. So you can do the maths. It has never missed a beat. I think I've blown two fuses in it in the whole time I've had it. And yeah, awesome. Let's see if this one's any good. Nope, that one's no good either. So I've got four that need to be had a look at. And I've got a heap of Sony's, which I want to get rid of. Well, not get rid of, but get get them done. Um, there'll be a second bank up here. I'm going to work my banks up. I might even use the 12 volt line off this. It's got 25 amps off the 12 volt line. It's got 25 volts off the correction. Not 25 volts. It has 25 amps. 25 amps off off the 5 volt line. 25 amps off the 12 volt line. I didn't really want these greens here. I don't know how I ended up with green, but they're there now, so I'll use them. And when they're red, no one's going to tell. Shh, don't tell anyone. So, all good. There's 20, 20, 20 of my best going on there. So we'll have a go at that. I'll make another second row. I was a couple of fuses short to make the second row. I have got another one of these power supplies, so two of them will be going. Or maybe one, if uh, you've got a good idea to use the 12 volt line to get that 25 amps out. Point me in the direction. Um, constant current source would be good. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's it from me for today. Make sure you use good, good power leads and make sure that if you're losing power off your um, pair of shoes check them out because nine times out of ten they'll be stuffed all right okay see you now bye